Hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial from the Simurity Academy. The topic today is going to be Netcat. Netcat has been called the Swiss Army Knife of TCP IP for different reasons. It's a tool that every system administrator, every penetration tester, every ethical hacker must master and must know what it is and how to use it properly. And the agenda for today's presentation is going to be like this. We are going to define what Netcat is and its features, and then we are going to see how we can use Netcat for different purposes. We're going to look how Netcat can be used as a network client, that is, it can connect to other servers, and we're going to see how Netcat can be a server in itself, listening on a certain port, on a certain system, and then it accepts connections from different people. And then we are going to look at how you can transfer files using Netcat. And then finally, how we can do basic port scanning with Netcat. The issue with Netcat is it has so many different features. And we are not going to cover all the features in this video tutorial. There will be part two and part three later on where we cover some advanced topics. So what is Netcat? Netcat is a multi-purpose network tool and as I said it's called the Swiss Army Knife of TCP IP and it's been called this way for a reason because it has so many features and can do so many things over the network. It's a fundamental and very important tool in any arsenal of any network administrator and network security professional as well. So whether you are network engineer, IT engineer or you are a security engineer, you need to know Netcat. So it can do so many things, a multitude of things. And it can be a client where you can connect to other servers. You can connect, for example, to HTTP server, to FTP server, to SMTP, to POP3, and so on, or to even to a Telnet server. And of course, when you connect to Telnet server, you can actually issue some commands. Or you can set up Netcat as a listener, and then it accepts connection from different machines. And you can even trigger some actions to do once a client connects to you. It can even transfer files between machines so you can use it to transfer uh, whatever files, text files or any other files like even mp3 files or images or, or pdf files, any type of file you can transfer it using Netcat is a very very quick way to transfer files between machines instead of enabling file sharing protocols and do all the setup, you can just, in, in, in one command, you can transfer files. It can also do basic port scanning. And I know actually there are so many port scanners out there that it provides so many features for port scanning like Nmap. And we're going to cover Nmap in the future in a different tutorial. But nevertheless, Netcat can do some sort of basic port scanning. So if you want to just do like simple, quick port scanning, then Netcat comes handy here. It can tunnel shell where you can have complete shell access to, to machines using Netcat and in different ways in different setups like bind shell or reverse shell and we're gonna cover the bind shell and reverse shell in part two and then finally netcat can act as a port forwarding relay and we're gonna cover this in part three where you actually use netcat as a way to get access to systems behind netcat in a way that can be called pivoting we're gonna look at this feature later on in part three but for today we're going to cover those basic concepts. We're going to start with how you can run Netcat as a client. When you run Netcat as a client, it can act as a replacement of Telnet. Telnet is one of those old protocols that can be used to access a system and then gain some interactive uh, command line control on it or a shell, interactive shell. So Netcat as a client can replace Telnet and it can do something that's called banner grabbing. Banner grabbing is something we do in intelligence gathering or during the intelligence gathering or information gathering phase where we connect to a certain server and then get the banner of this server as given to you and then understand the server, the, the software service behind it and the version of that service. So you can connect to, to an HTTP server and then see if it is an Apache server or IS server and see the exact version of Apache and the exact version of IS. If we want to run Netcat as a client, this is the actual command that we need to type. It's Netcat and then simply the IP address followed by a port. This is all we need to do. 
There are no switches here. There's nothing. It's, it is exactly the way you would run Telnet. In Telnet, you would type Telnet followed by the IP address and then the port number. So let's look at a demo here. I'm going to show you two consoles, one for Metasploitable. And Metasploitable has the TCP port 1524 open. And that port has a shell. It's actually a vulnerable shell. And then from Kali Linux, we are going to run Netcat as a client. Let's see how we can do that. In here, we have two machines. We have Metasploitable machine running as VM over here. And next to it, we have Kali Linux machine running as VM as well. Now, as I said, Metasploitable has, has a shell accessible on port 1524 and it's exposed. So all we need to do is to connect using a tool like Netcat to that port and see how we can get a shell. So here we go. Netcat and then the IP of Metasploitable, which is 104, as you can see here, it's 104. And then the port number is 1524. And then once I hit enter, I'm actually at root on Metasploitable. And then I can, if I type who am I, I'm the root user. And then uname minus A to get the banner of the machine. And it's Linux Metasploitable 2.6.24. And then, of course, I can run ls and any other commands. And just for verification, if I come here and then I go to the root over here and type ls, I see all of these files. Let's create a new file from here. I would come here and type touch my access file, enter. And then if I come here and hit ls again, I should see my access file is right here. That was a demo, a quick demo of how to use Netcat as, as a client and the replacement of Telnet. We connect it to Metasploitable and then we are able to have a shell. The other thing we can do with Netcat as a client is to grab the banner of different protocols. Not any protocol, but service protocols that are text-based, that are ASCII-based, that are human-readable. Like SMTP, like POP3, like HTTP, like SSH, okay? So we have again the same Metasploitable running and it has different services. It has SSH, it has HTTP, it has SMTP, and it has so many other services. And we are going to see how by connecting to those services using Netcat, we can get the banner and know certain stuff about the service that is running. Let us look at a demo. Okay, we have the same servers again here. We have the Kali Linux over here and next to it is the Metasploitable. And we are going to grab the banner of different services. We are going to start with SSH. So we are going to type here Netcat, the IP address of Metasploitable, and then the port 22 or SSH. So once we connect to it, we are given a banner. And this banner will reveal certain information about the running service, about the remote service. And as you can see here, we have SSH version 2.0 and open SSH version 4.7 on Debian Ubuntu. This will give us an insight into the, the actual service that is running. We can see if there is an outdated software, an outdated server that is running a vulnerable one for example and then we can attempt to exploit it later on then we can pick another port and let's pick 25 which is the smtp server and as you can see here we are also given the host name metasportable.local domain and then the esmtp and postfix postfix is the software service that's running on metasploitable as an email server. If it was Windows system, for example, you can see Microsoft Exchange server. Let us pick now another server and that is the HTTP server. Now, with HTTP server, I want you to pay careful attention here because when you connect to an HTTP server, you are not given a banner directly. Once you connect like this one here, it means you are connected, but you are not given anything you need to send a particular line now 
and this line would be the normal get request the http request that is of the type get so we type get and then we try to query the root directory and then we insert the protocol version http 1.1 and then you have to hit enter twice so enter and then enter to get a response if you look at the third line from the response the server header it reads apache 2.2.8 ubuntu the server that is running the remote service that is running on the http port is apache and its version is 2.2.8 now this is of course an old version of apache and it is vulnerable let us access another http service and now we are going to do it on port 8180 so netcat 192.168.0.104 and then port 8180 now what is portable had this port and it should be running tomcat on here and then we send get root directory http 1.1 and then double enter and what we get here is apache coyote 1.1 Apache Coyote is actually the connector or the listener for Apache Tomcat server. So this is indeed now we know that Tomcat is running on this particular port. Let us now do this on google.com on port 80. And let's see, we send get root HTTP 1.1. You have to send this line. To ask for the root directory and the protocol version this is part of the http request protocol if you study the http request and how it actually is formed you will know that the first line is actually the type of the request could be get or post and then you have to hit enter twice here as you can see here we got very very long response and we cannot even scroll back to check the headers of the reply so what we are going to do now is to repeat the same command but save the whole thing in a file let's call it let's call it google http get http 1.1 two times and we should assume that netcat is saving the entire response in a file now so do we find google http yes let us do cat google http and we see the whole thing now since we are interested only on the first lines the header lines we can type head and then you can see here the header of the file you can see certain things and when it comes to the server it's gws and gws stands for google web server so google has their own web server called gws and that's what they are using over here so we have seen how we can grab the banners of different services of ssh smtp and http and let's move on to how we can use netcat as a network listener or a server and in this case netcat can bind to a certain port number and listen for incoming connections on that port number and it can only do this for one connection it cannot have simultaneous multiple connection and in order to do this either you have to use other tools or you have to script netcat to actually receive consecutive connections the way to enable the listening mode on netcat is to use the minus l switch and minus l instructs netcat to listen now so without minus l netcat behaves as a client with minus l netcat behaves as a server it becomes a listening server receiving incoming connections from other clients and of course with minus l you have to give it a port number using the minus p switch so just typing this command now netcat minus l minus p 7689 we are going to instruct netcat to listen on port 6789 and once you do this netcat will print on the terminal window anything it receives 
whatever it receives from the client is going to print it on the window. And also, the Netcat server has the ability to send stuff to the Netcat client. And then the Netcat client will show it on the terminal. Let's see a demo. We have here the Metasploitable and Kali again. And I'm going to set Netcat as a listening server on Metasploitable. Metasploitable comes also with Netcat, just like Kali Linux. So netcat minus L minus P5678. So in here we have netcat listening. Let us now connect to that listener using netcat as a client on the Kali Linux 104 and 5678. Now we have a connection. I'm going to show you later how you can enable the verbose mode to see some extra clarification of what's going on. So in here, if I type hello, hello will be sent to the server and then it will be printed here. Let's type something else now, welcome, and then it will be printed here as well. Now I can send something, a text from Metasploitable from the server to the client. So. I am Metasploitable. Yeah, this is the keyboard. So, whatever you type here is going to be sent there. And in here, I am Kali. And then, and so on. So you can send data now back and forth between the client and the server and vice versa. This is the default behavior. Now, given that Netcat prints out whatever it receives from the client, it prints it out on the server, and whatever it receives from the server, it prints it out on the client, then we can use this feature to transfer files. But now, instead of reading the input from the, the terminal window, we are going to read the input from a file, and instead of printing the output, on the terminal, we are going to print the output on a file. So, again, we will have a network listener on one server, and then Netcat as a client on another machine, and then we are going to transfer a file to the server. So, we have to set on the receiver first a listening Netcat, and we are going to do it with minus L, and then the port number, and we are going to enable the minus V. Minus V at the verbosity mode, which means to print out extra data that shows what's going on with Netcat. And then with this, the redirect character, we are instructing Netcat to print anything it receives to a file. So we set this on the receiver end, on the server listening end, and then on the sender end, the client end, we issue this command, Netcat, the IP address of Metasploitable, the port number in here and this time instead of reading the input from the terminal window we are going to read the input from a file and this file will be sent to the server let's see how we can do this let us create a file here so we are going to create a file and I'm going to call it netcat test.txt so netcat test.txt appears right here. Let us fill it with some text. So echo, this is my file. It is meant to test netcat file transfer. Netcat is the best tool. We close it and redirect the whole thing to netcat test.txt cat netcat. As you can see here, we have filled the file with some text. Now we want to transfer this file to Metasploitable. Let us now set ncat in a listening mode on the Metasploitable in order to receive that file. So minus L minus P, we're going to give it this port 4567 this time and instruct it to redirect all the input it receives to this file, netcat test file. So now 
it's going to accept a connection on this port 4567 and whatever it receives is going to be saved at netcat test file on Kali Linux we have the file ready we can now transfer it to Metasploitable so netcat connect to Metasploitable 104 port 4567 and then read the input now from the file which is netcat test.txt let's hit enter and see what's going to happen now it will remain connected because if i want to send extra data it's going to be appended also to the file so everything inside the file now has been sent and supposedly netcat is going to save it on metasploitable if i don't want to add anything i will simply hit Control c so i close the connection and supposedly netcat on metasploitable has saved everything sent to this file so ls we have netcast test let us check the the content of this file and as you can see here we have transferred a file to metasploitable the final thing we can do with netcat is port scanning it's not the final thing in general but the final thing in this tutorial a better tool for port scanning is nmap if you are looking for a sophisticated full featured tool then nmap is the tool to go and we are going to cover it in the future but netcat is also equipped with the basic type of port scanning that comes handy at some point like if you want to do something quick something basic you can rely on netcat so with port scanning netcat instead of now connecting to one single port like we have used it it's going to connect to multiple ports so we're going to give it a range of ports and then and instead of simply connecting to that port and then start sending input and reading stuff from the terminal we are going to shut down the input output feature of the connection and the way to do it is like this we have a switch called minus z and minus z stands for zero and zero here means zero input output so it connects to that port and instead of giving you the option to send input and receive output is going to shut down this feature and just check if the port is open or not if there is a connection or not in addition to minus z we are using here another switch minus w and minus w stands for wait we're gonna give it one second and this is a timeout so netcat will wait for one second before it receives a connection sometimes some servers are busy they take a slow time to 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 respond or make a connection to then i have a higher chance of detecting open ports that are slow so we have minus v the verbose mode and then minus w with one second minus z for zero input and output and then again the ip and the range of port let's see how we can do it we are going now to to do port scanning against metasploitable so netcat minus v minus w1 minus z for zero input output the ip address of metasploitable and then the range of ports to scan let's say i will scan the first 1000 24 ports as you can see here netcat tried to connect one port at a time from 1 to 1024 and then when it receives a connection when it receives a reply or a response during the tcp handshake it will indicate that the port is open and it will then close the connection and move to the next port there is no input output here like in the previous demos we have seen so far where netcat will give you the option to send stuff from the terminal and receive stuff from the server so with minus z you are simply getting the status of the port if it is open you have one line showing that this port is open and that's it and by sending such requests to a range of ports you can 
know which ports are open in that range that's all for today thank you very much for listening and watching and i look forward to seeing you in the future